Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Exceptional Conservative Show live from the nation's capital. We are not ashamed of the good news of conservatism, but it is the power of liberation first to the Republican and then to the Socialists. We open tonight with very poor news to have to give to the American people. No, it's not one of the liberals here creating trouble for Donald Trump. It actually happens to be jihadists. And they have stricken Manchester, United Kingdom. 19 dead, 50 wounded at the Ariana Grande concert this evening. Just as the concert was ending, two big blasts. It took a while for them to determine that that blast was a result of terrorism, but so be it, they did finally. Dr. Kelly Ward will be with us tonight. We will be talking with her about Manchester, about Donald Trump's trip, and so many other things. It's so good to have Dr. Kelly Ward with us. Uh, would have preferred her in the U.S. Senate rather than John, I'm blaming Donald Trump for everything. McCain uh, definitely would have preferred. Uh, as well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, my very good friend, Sir Mark the Bloviating Zeppelin, will be with us. Uh, nice clock in route your house, even as we speak. Thank you, Bloviating Zeppelin. I really appreciate that. Uh, it, hopefully, leave it up to me to hang it. It may not work anymore. Uh, so good to have you all here. Uh, Jason Miller, the Bloviating Zeppelin, in the chat room tonight. Mary Brockman is my bouncer. If you diss her, you diss me. You will be dismissed. Uh, I want to thank everybody uh, for being a part of uh, what we're doing here at the Exceptional Conservative Network uh, as we're beginning our countdown towards our move to an atomic clock. Thank you, Mary. I really need it. Uh, to uh, TECN TV uh, in July. I want you all to continue to watch and promote and pray for uh, Melanie Collette, uh, for her show and for what she will be doing. And for all the others uh, who uh, are left, we pray right now for uh, Ralph J. Chittams. We've been missing him for a few weeks uh, as we begin to expand and grow our particular network uh, and so many others. But I, I want you to just keep them in your prayers, okay, and may God bless them accordingly. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, listen, you know how we start off this particular program. Uh, we allow our kids to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. We take our right hand, we put it over our heart, and we begin the Pledge of Allegiance. Kitties, for those who are watching us via live stream, uh, you can watch us at the big flag. For those who are watching us via Ustream, you got the two big, two little flags, of, I don't know, it's something like that. Yeah, there we go. We got the two flags behind me. Uh, and for those who are listening to us via Spreaker, find a flag uh, and push your right hand over your heart and pledge allegiance to it. Uh, and we want to thank the good people at Red Nation Rising, 2 a.m. on the Liberty Channel for carrying us, as well as High Plains Pundit and SHR Media Live. We'll be right back. Pledge allegiance, everybody. All right. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let us get on the telephono. Uh, a wonderful woman, not only a brilliant woman, a graduate from Duke University, a doctor, a mother, uh, a champion at the state senate level in Arizona of conservative values, none other than Dr. Kelly Ward, and what a great and wonderful time to have the opportunity to talk with her uh, tonight uh, as we are dealing with the incredible jihadists. Hello, 
Hello, Tony Ward. Good evening, Dr. Ward. This is Ken McClinton from the Exceptional Conservative Show. So glad to have you on the air with us tonight. Hi, Ken. It's great. I'm, I'm glad to be here. It's great to be here with you. Thank you so much, Dr. Ward. Uh, listen, we open tonight with some unfortunate news as we have been receiving reports uh, from Manchester, United Kingdom, um, of the 19 dead and 50 wounded uh, as a result of a terrorist attack at the Ariana Grande concert. Uh, wanted to get your thoughts uh, regarding that. Uh, any words that you wish to offer to the people of Great Britain? Well, uh, of course, my thoughts and prayers are with, with the people all over, all over Great Britain, especially those affected by this horrific, horrific event. I mean, it looks like, you know, I think it's still a developing story but that it was a suicide bomber um, who maybe had, uh, you know, nails and other metal objects and whatever kind of explosive device this person was using that has created wounds in people that are similar to what you see in war. And, you know, I'm sure that the people who just wanted to go to a concert, now Ariana Grande is not really my cup of tea, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm sure exactly. people who were there didn't expect to to um, to have terror enter their lives on a night when they just wanted to go out, a lot of them with kids, to, to see a concert. So, uh, you know, we, we've got to beef up our security. We've got to be, you know, be ready for these kinds of attacks because that's what the terrorists are looking for. They're looking for every opportunity to make us change our way of life, our way of life based on um, their actions and their attacks. Exactly. Now, there's some who are suggesting, uh, Dr. Ward, uh, and regretfully, I, I still blame Arizona for John McCain being here in Washington and not you. Uh, so I, I hold that against your state. Uh, but there are those who are suggesting that this bombing was a result of President Donald Trump's speech in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, uh, just a few days ago. But I, I think it's a little more you don't do that type of bombing in a short span of time in terms of planning. Uh, what say you, what your thoughts? Do you think there, this is reaction to that or a little bit more intensive planning by the jihadists? Well, I, you know, I, I haven't even heard if they think it is uh, something that is jihad. Uh, it, it appears to, you know, from the, the mechanism used that that probably is the case. But I can tell you that um, you, you can't say that this is reactionary to that speech. Actually, uh, you know, I think that the cause of this is because those those mainly Muslim nations have not united to drive that radical element, that radical Islamic terror element out of their countries, just like the, the, the president said in his speech, out of their countries, out of their places of worship, off this earth. And then. They, they haven't been willing to do it, and they're festering around the world. I think that with the leadership of President Trump, we are going to finally uh, make some inroads into these kinds of attacks because the, the Arab nations, the Muslim na nations, the Middle East is going to unite, mm -hmm. and, and they're going to work to rid themselves of that cancer that's within their, their countries and within their religions. Now, there are those, and we're just getting word in um, from Manchester, United Kingdom, from Sky News, uh, that it was a suicide bomber uh, mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. was involved in this particular activity. No, there is no linkage to an individual group, but the presumption that we've had from uh, that type of ordinance uh, is normally related to someone of a jihadi stripe. Uh, I don't think I'll have to wait up much longer to uh, discern that thing. Uh, but we've been fighting in Afghanistan for going on 17 years now. Uh, my daughter's mm -hmm. graduated from college uh, and got master's and, and other things uh, while we've been fighting. And yet, th th it doesn't appear that we have actually made any real difference in this particular fight. Uh, Dr. Ward, are, are there things that we should be doing? Are there things that this administration should be doing uh, to intensify? Are there things that NATO should be doing to intensify efforts against the Islamists? You know, I think that eight years under Barack Obama and his his policy 
policies that were not strong, yeah. that, that were not putting, making America the strongest nation in the world where countries like this would be fearful and people like this, not countries, but people like this would be fearful to commit such acts. Uh, we have been significantly weakened by Barack Obama. And so I'm glad to see President Trump trying to unite and clean up the neighborhood over in the Middle East. I think he wants to unite them against the biggest sponsor of, of uh, state sponsor of terrorism, Iran. Yes. Uh, I think that they are getting the tools that are necessary for the region to come together so that we can have some sort of stability. Uh, you know, I, I, I pray for peace. I would love for there to be peace, but I think it's going to have to go through stability, and stability might be all we can hope for. Let's, let's see. I think that those countries need to create kind of a, a Middle Eastern NATO of their own. Yes. I don't know that, that our NATO organization, as it currently exists, if that's their mission, is to go into the Middle East and, and, uh, and intervene. I think that those nations are going to have to come together in their own kind of peacekeeping um, arena and create create that kind of NATO-like atmosphere with each other. Exactly. We're, we won't know peace until they actually prefer it themselves. Uh, we're talking tonight with Dr. Kelly Ward, who is running for U.S. Senate out in the great state of Arizona. Arizona, you got a chance to uh, redeem yourself after the last election, and I would encourage you to support uh, Dr. Kelly Ward in that pursuit. Listen, we're going to go to a quick break. Uh, if you could go to mute real quick, uh, that would be wonderful. We will be back in two minutes and two seconds with more of the best in urban conservative talk. You are listening live from the nation's capital, Washington, D.C., to the Exceptional Conservative Show. We are not ashamed of the good news of conservatism, for it is the power of liberation, first to the Republican and then the Socialists. And we appreciate Mary Brockman in the chat room. If you diss her, you diss me, you will be dismissed. We'll be right back with more of the best right after this. With home values up and interest rates near all-time lows, you probably know that now is a great time to refinance. Like the Johnsons, who save $436 a month. $436 a month? It's simple. Just go to LendingTree.com, compare loan offers for free, and see how much you could save in just five minutes. I thought you said the bank gave you the best rate. Yes. Lending Tree. When banks compete, you win. I have to do everything myself. Someone is sleeping on the couch tonight. Now, at Brownells, we know you may have only one shot to harvest that trophy, so we have thousands of accessories and replacement parts to improve your chances. We know how much you love to shoot, so our gunsmiths' articles and videos will help you do more and get more out of your guns. We also value your hard work and money. That's why only Brownells backs up everything we sell with a 100% unconditional lifetime guarantee. Brownells, the world's largest supplier of firearm accessories and gunsmithing tools. From the war front to the streets of our nation's capital. Men of Faith, Dr. Michael Jones, the underground professor, and Kenneth McClinton, the exceptional conservative, bring both constitutional gravitas and spiritual perspective on today's issues to the most influential Christian urban talk show, 9.05 p.m. Eastern, Thursdays. It's a new day on New Day, Black and Red. America is prepared to stand with you in pursuit of shared interests and common security. But the nations of the Middle East cannot wait for American power to crush this enemy for them. The nations of the Middle East will have to decide what kind of future they want for themselves, for their country, and frankly, for their families, and for their children. It's a choice between two futures. And it is a choice America cannot make for you. A better future is only possible if your nations drive out the terrorists and drive out the extremists. Drive them out. Drive them out of your places of worship. Drive them out of your community. Drive them out of your holy land and drive them out of this earth. America. Ladies and gentlemen, that was President Donald Trump just a few days ago in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. You're back with the exceptional one, Ken McClinton, and also Dr. Kelly Ward. Uh, I, want, I want you all to know, I, I know that Donald Trump is not 
a great orator. Uh, we've already had a president who was a great talker and no action. Um, but that was a very, very good speech. I read it out of the Hill today. That was a sincerely tremendous speech in which he is chastising and also encouraging uh, those individuals to come into a NATO alliance for the Middle East and to drive out the enemy from within. Uh, how effectual, Dr. Ward, do you believe that speech was uh, to the good people of the Middle East? You know, I thought that that was really a great speech. I'm wondering who wrote it. Yes. Uh, Donald Trump has to approve the speech. Um, you know, I, I know people sometimes try to help me with my speeches as well, but, but ultimately it has to be in my words from my heart to be able to deliver it. So I think that was from, from President Trump's heart, but I do wonder who wrote it because I thought it was very presidential. It, it put him in a light that the media cannot stand. Yes. I, I posted it on my Facebook page yesterday on my on my campaign page at Kelly Ward AZ. Kelly with an I, because I am a champion for We the People. Uh, and you can read it. But I think that post was actually being shadow banned in some way because I have over 76,000 people on that page. And it was seen by less than 1,000. Less than 1,000. Wow. Um, unbelievable because it was the words of the president that he released and and um, in case people didn't see it also I think sometimes people need to read it to really get the the whole intent behind the entire speech but I thought I thought it was a great speech and I thought it was was very moving and it will be very influential in the Middle East and around the world I I so much agree with you dr. Ward uh, the, the camp the, the the campaign obviously put together a great speech uh, uh, with his consent um, and he spoke and, and what we haven't heard really since about 2002, 2004, that area, uh, when we had George W. Bush who was saying to us that there is an axis of evil. You have North Korea, you have Iran, uh, and uh, as well, Afghanistan. Uh, and that these are the places where you have the greatest risk. Uh, North Korea hasn't changed. Iran hasn't changed. But certainly ISIS has, and it seems to be mm -hmm. distributing itself across the world. Donald Trump put it in these terms uh, in Riyadh. He said, this is a battle between the good and the evil. And I had not heard that in over a decade. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you do you believe that that was a little too tough, too terse of our president to go to a foreign land and tell them the truth? No way. I'm tired of being lied to by, by the media and by politicians. And so I am so excited to have a president who tells the truth and tells the same truth no matter who he's talking to that's one of the things that that's one of the reasons why donald trump was elected to be the president is because he is willing to cut right cut cut to the chase and and bring the truth to the people he did it on the campaign trail and he's done it from the the oval office and now he's done it on the international stage and i think that that's what's going to allow us as a world to experience the peace through strength that Ronald Reagan touted uh, when he was the president. We, we've got to have it. America has got to be strong so that the rest of the world is a better place. Is there one thing that you would like to see done um, by the Arizona contingency of senators regarding, regarding foreign policy? So if you were on that Senate floor right now, is there any proposition that you would put before the American people uh, that might in, encourage uh, a greater force uh, against uh, right. Islamic threat? Well, I, you know, Arizona, we should, well, number one, neither of our senators supports our president. And that is that is an yeah. atrocity that has to be remedied in 2018 when we defeat Jeff Blake. But yeah. I think that, that Arizona should be putting forth uh, a message, policies that help Donald Trump secure the border. If that means build a big, beautiful wall, then Jeff Blake and John McCain should get behind a big, beautiful wall so that we can have the national security and the national sovereignty that people in Arizona and people in the, the entire United States are crying out for. They need to stop echoing Democrat talking points mm -hmm. and, and get on board with the president so that we can make America great again and we can achieve the things that the people put Donald Trump in office to do, secure the border, repeal Obamacare, fix the tax code, decrease regulations, treat our veterans with respect, 
get this economy going so that we are thriving in, in each and every state in our country and in the world. Well, Dr. Ward, you know that yeah, board. We, we can't do, we can't just jump on board with the president of the United States. There are so many other important things that we have to work on, like collusion with Russia regarding the election yeah. and finding out yeah. why Hillary Clinton lost. Republicans have got to focus on that, right? <laughs> well, I mean, if you look at John McCain and Jeff Blake, you would think that, yes, that's what people want to, want to focus on. I mean, they both two have become the mainstream media's go-to people, yes. go-to, go-to, and the Republican side to attack the president, whether it's about NAFTA, because, you know, they're, they, they, they love NAFTA the way it is. Mm -hmm. I think that renegotiating NAFTA with a, an American bent is what we should do. But on the Comey issue and on Russia, John McCain and Jeff Flake are right there with Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer attacking the president again and again and again instead of focusing on getting things done that the American people are demanding. And that's why the swamp will be drained in 2018. I think uh, that a lot of these people on both sides of the aisle, Republican and Democrat, are going to find themselves suddenly out of their cushy senatorial jobs and House jobs out of the global tuxedo club where they love to rub elbows with uh, very important people and back at home um i don't know if any of them have ever had jobs or <laughs> had a job in a long long time but they're gonna have to find one dr kelly ward is with us tonight you will find her at kellyward.com kellyward.com that's k-e-l-l-i-w-a-r-d.com uh, 33 years in the u.s air force and air national guard as an emergency physician god bless you uh for your service uh to your husband uh while yeah. he was in, yeah. in service uh you are a graduate of duke university and west virginia I School. Am. Go blue, go blue devil. there you go uh <laughs> we forgive you uh and <laughs> all the great people in north carolina <laughs> forgive you no <laughs> that's okay i can take it uh but uh, you have you have been a force to reckon with when it comes to the whole idea of reforming Obamacare uh, and getting it right. Unfortunately, uh, there have been many fights uh, against the Freedom Caucus that uh, if, if it were not for them, oh my God, uh, what bill would be headed towards the uh, halls of the U.S. Senate? Uh, but how important is it to get this right? You know, it, it's very important. And I think that we are on an incremental path to hopefully getting it right. But, you know, I, I'm disappointed in the bill that even even the second try around, yeah. because I still think it's repeal in name only. And Republicans on the House side and the, and the Senate side have been running on repeal of Obamacare for about seven, eight years and, and promising us that. And now they've delivered us Obamacare light with a, with a Republican twist. And um, and I worry that in the Senate it's going to get even worse. Yeah, um, they guaranteed it. They're, they're known for that. <laughs> They've guaranteed it indeed. And, and uh, along those particular lines, um, uh, Rens Priebus, the chief chief uh, of staff for Donald Trump, the president of the United States, uh, flew back from Israel today um, to prepare for the release of tomorrow's proposed budget. Uh, suggestions mm -hmm. to the U.S. House of Representatives, which is inclusive, and we've already heard the the liberals bemoan that this will be the end of uh, the democracy. Uh, that there will be a nearly trillion dollar cut in programs like Medicaid and also SNAP, uh, mm -hmm. which is the uh, supplemental food program, uh, and this is the statements uh or these are the statements that are coming forward uh dr ward you can address them accordingly uh that donald trump is trying to starve america's children uh that he's trying to make certain that everyone stays health unhealthy and go uh virtually die uh, he doesn't want people to have health insurance or health care and he's killing the poor people uh, would you respond to the proposed budget cuts at least the, the ones that were uh spoken about today Right. You know, I think that 
that is just a bunch of baloney. Thank you. And anybody who believes it needs to have their head examined <laughs> uh, by somebody else, a physician, not, not me, I'm a family physician, but there are plenty of psychiatrists and, and uh, psychology providers out there because <laughs> it's simply untrue. It's simply untrue. Uh, you know, number one, first and foremost, Donald Trump, is attempting to make this economy grow. He's decreasing taxes, he's decreasing regulations, so that businesses, large and small, and most importantly, small, because they're the drivers of economic, the engine, the economic engine of our country, so that they can thrive. And the best social program certainly is a job. Yes. And if we have these job creators that are not the government, the government is not a job creator. You know, businesses, small businesses, large businesses, medium-sized businesses are out there creating jobs, then less people are going to need welfare. So don't forget, Medicaid is welfare. It's, it's health care welfare. It is a safety net, but it has been abused. That mm -hmm. safety net, whenever you see somebody walking on a tightrope and, and if they unfortunately fall into the safety net, they don't just snuggle down into it. They struggle and they try to get on their feet and get their feet on the ground. Unfortunately, we've made it such that it's kind of, you know, it's not perfectly comfortable, but, you know, some, some people are like, hey, I can get this money from the government. And I don't have to do anything. Perfect. I'll just snuggle down into my, my safety net, my feather bed, and I'll stay right here. But I think we should be urging people to get jobs, to experience the, the um, amazing sense of accomplishment and pride in a job well done rather than in uh, their hand out for a government check. Dr. Dr. Ward, th this is what Republicans, I, I didn't say conservatives, but this is what Republicans tell me. That message that you just gave is going to cost us an election. That's not what the people want to hear. The people want to hear that you are compassionate and that you're looking out for their best interests and that you believe government is the institution that will guarantee their civil rights, including health care and anything else that the government can come up with. Uh, it, your response to all of that? Well, number one, that sounds like the liberal progressive Democrat response, not the Republican response. Uh, because Republicans are caring, compassionate, loving people who do want a safety net. A safety net for people who cannot care for themselves or who fall down and need a hand up instead of a hand out. And um, and I'm all for that. I'm all for char charitable giving. I'm all for having a safety net for those people at, that, that cannot take care of themselves. And something that we need to remember, because Democrats love to call Republicans mean and say that we just want, you know, like you said, that, that uh, we want poor people to die. We want yeah. nobody to have health care. And we don't want people to be able to eat. Um, no, no, that is not true. We have limited amounts of resources. We have a finite, finite amount of resources. And we, when we dilute that by allowing people who can take care of themselves to take it from people who can't, that is what's me. That is me. Dr. Ward, this is an opportunity for the American people to get to know you better. I, I want to address one other question to you, and then I want you to spend the rest of the time. Uh, and I, I'll, I'll say this uh, because I am painfully regretful. We met at the CPAC just recently, and I, yeah. uh, and I, I told you then, whispering in your ear, how regretful I was that you were not on the Senate floor uh, because Ted Cruz needs a little help. Uh, but, he does. He does. <laughs> but um, with the budget coming out, and it's unfortunate that the budget is coming out on tomorrow at a time where Cornerstone Capital Group last week announced that over 8 million retail jobs will be lost over the next 10 years to automation. Ford Motor Company is firing 10,000 people, uh, including the CEO, Mark Fields, uh, got his notice on Friday. Uh, it appears uh, that we aren't growing fast enough, or at least not in the areas that we were told that we need to focus on. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and this opens the opportunity for people to say, well, listen, if poor people can't get the retail jobs, then are there any jobs for poor people to have? Uh, is this the role where government comes in, or, or are we asking too much of government? I think that's asking too much of government, because government has been known 
they try to pick winners well yeah. and losers and mostly they pick losers they, yes. i mean they pick something and it loses and it loses and it loses and then they say let's invest some more money and some more capital and some more manpower into this losing proposition so that we can lose even more uh and and so government needs to get out of the way so that we can innovate so that companies are able to innovate the economic climate in the country has to be such that they are able to do that that means cutting taxes that means decreasing regulation so that that um, the innovation that's going to be necessary to to fill in whenever we lose these retail jobs when that, because I mean, automation, uh, we've all been, you know, there have been movies about it for decades, and now we actually are getting it. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes in, it is going to be a disruptive, disruptive force. It's not just going to be in the retail industry. Think about those self-driving cars that you see. We have them in Arizona, both mm -hmm. Uber and Google. Uh, so you have these driverless cars, mm -hmm. and once people don't have to drive, that's going to be a huge going to have a huge impact especially with men men are very um they're they're in the uh driving industry and mm -hmm. so there's going to be the need to innovate so that we have things for all people poor yeah. rich everyone to do exactly and and the blow in example in our chat room makes it very clear there is no bringing those jobs back there's no stopping automation. Because of that, it is the best and most important reason to stop immigration into the United States. Oh. You have fervently, you said in an interview once uh, that if Trump builds a wall, you'll bring the mortar. <laughs> yep. I will mix the mortar to fix the border. Actually, somebody made me a t-shirt and I just got it today that says mix the mortar to fix the border. <laughs> yes, illegal immigration is affecting especially those low wage earners because yeah. they're being kicked out of the job market and then on to government welfare and that is not what we want we want our american citizens to be put first we want them to be able to thrive and to get jobs and we want this economy to grow because that's going to lift all boats and it's going to make more, more people across the board able to be prosperous you know it's it's very easy um to tell us why not to vote for jeff flake who had a, a conservative union score of 74 two years ago, uh, or uh, John McCain, who is laughably a conservative, uh, if we can use that term without uh, splitting our, our stomachs laughing. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> but tell everyone why Dr. Kelly Ward should be elected the next U.S. Senator from the state of Arizona. Well, you know, if you want somebody who believes in limited government, low taxes, personal responsibility, and following the, the Constitution, then this capable, competent, qualified doctor, Dr. Kelly Ward, is more than willing to go to Washington, D.C. and serve, sacrifice and serve for a limited amount of time, because I do believe in term limits, and start, start an agenda, support those conservatives that are there that need that the support that they need, uh, or that, that they're desperately dying for, support the president in his efforts to drain the swamp and make America great again, and um, and really put this country on the right track, and then pass the torch to the next generation who is ready, who will be ready um, in, in six to 12 years to take that torch and to continue our path, and to continue us on the right path here in the United States to prosperity and happiness. And, you know, uh, that's, what we, that's what we all want, right? Yes, we do. And listen, I have one real huge, tough question for you before you go. Uh, sure. Who was noted as the most conservative member of the Arizona State Senate? <laughs> that would be Kelly Ward. There you go. <laughs> Uh, that's right. I was I was rated the most conservative member of the Arizona legislature, not just the Senate, the entire legislature. So oh, wow. if you're looking for conservative values and a full spectrum conservative, go to kellyward.com and join my team. Dr. Ward, thank you so much for being with us on this most ominous night, and thank you for your kind words to the people of you of the United Kingdom. Hey, keep up keep up the great work. Keep up the fight. Keep on the you know keep the pressure on because that's the way we're going to drain the swamp and make things great in this country. We definitely will. Thank you so much and God bless you. God bless you too. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, that was Dr. Kelly Ward. Uh, I'm telling you, you don't have to worry about whether she's going to be a conservative 
uh, when she gets off the airplane. She's she's 24-7 conservatism. And Arizona, you need to make the right choice. We're going to work on having her come back uh, later on in the summer. But uh, you, you need to make the right decision, Arizona. And, and that means uh, that you choose the real conservative, not the one that you make up along the way. We'll be right back with more of the best at Urban Conservative Talk right after these messages uh, from kind people who have put their programs together for us. Power brokers use corrupt politicians, deceptive Islam, and lies from establishment media to turn the once shining city on a hill into the city of the blind. What do the elites fear? One man with a cane. I'm Dave Milner. Join me at SHR Media, High Plains Talk Radio, Spreaker, iTunes, and YouTube for a different kind of commentary on the unpleasant blind guy. Because truth is not always pleasant. Begin your morning the right way with some right thinking from me, Perry Drake, your friendly neighborhood drive-by pundit. I want you to join me every Tuesday and Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern and 9 a.m. Central Time on the Exceptional Conservative Network. From politics to pop culture to relationships to whatever else is on your mind, we have a great deal to talk about. Join in and let's get the talking started. Good morning. I'm Michael Wright. And I'm Shannon Wright. Okay, folks, that's not how it goes. I think I'm <laughs> Shannon and I you're so. Michael. Yeah. Okay. We are The Right Way with Shannon and Mike. Join us from 7 to 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Live on SHR Media. And on TECN. Where we'll be talking about all kinds of things. From sports and politics. To food and entertainment. To money. Family. And anything else in between. Community, holidays, all kinds of things. It'll be great. Join us from 7 to 9 a.m. Eastern Time. There are only two things you should be doing weeknights at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, and one of them is legal in 58 states. So do the other one. Listen live to the Exceptional Conservative Show with Ken McClinton, Monday through Wednesday at 9 10 p.m. Eastern Time on SHR Media and at the Exceptional Conservative Show.com. The Exceptional Conservative Show. Bringing the sexy back to late night conservative talk. You're listening to the most influential urban conservative talk show in all of the world. Christianity, conservatism, the Constitution, capitalism, we talk about it all right here on the Exceptional Conservative Show at theexceptionalconservativeshow.com. Go there now and join me in chat. We're spreading the good news to the ends of the earth. We'll be back right after these messages. The bloviating Zeppelin. He's big-footed enough radio shows to last a lifetime, courtesy of Sean, Clint, Ken, and Jersey Joe. Now it's time for him to waddle on his own two feet via the glorious SHR media. Gird thy loins for the bloviating Zeppelin's berserk bobcat saloon, coming soon to ossicles near you, Excelsior. I'm Ken McClinton, chairman of the Exceptional Conservative Network. Never has the cry for economic liberty been more resounding in urban America than on Election Day 2016. It's the economy. All real change begins with the American entrepreneur. Socialism did not work. Progressivism stole the wealth of individuals and families. You voted for something different, real change. But what does real change look and sound like? It looks like Las Vegas, and it sounds like Freedom Fest 10. Freedom Fest, the world's largest gathering of free minds, is the popular liberty-minded conference 
at the beautiful Paris Resort in Las Vegas from July 19th to the 22nd. Hear the voices of the urban freedom movement. Denise Varelli, Larry Elder, Gina Lawson, Helen Riley, Ramesh Wadwa, and Zayad Abdul-Noir. Share ideas with powerful, liberty-minded figures like Steve Forbes, Jim Rogers, Lee Edwards, David Boaz, Doug Casey, Denish D'Souza, John Stossel, Lisa Kennedy, Peter Schiff, and keynote speaker William Shatner. Your money, your liberty, your freedom, your city. Come for the real and return with the change. Register now at freedomfest.com. That's freedomfest.com for $100 off the regular registration rate when you use the all caps code T-E-C-N. We'll see you there. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Exceptional Conservative show on the Exceptional Conservative Network. We are simply not ashamed of the good news of conservatism, for it is the power of liberation, first the Republican, then the Socialists. I want to thank Dr. Kelly Ward for stopping past this particular evening. If you really want a conservative, I'm I'm so sick of people using the term uh, or, or brandishing themselves something that they're not. Uh, kind of like going to the nightclub where all the guys are dancing together and calling yourself a real man. Um, I, I'm just saying, uh, vote for someone who really is conservative, and that way you don't have to guess. Just as simple as that. Uh, Arizona, if you make this mistake twice, uh, you're doomed to repeat your history, and it will be a very cruel one. Uh, make certain that you send to Washington, D.C. in 2018. Uh, the great and the wonderful Dr. Kelly Ward. Uh, now, state senator, conserv most conservative state senator, uh, she ain't going to change when you come to D.C. She just won't. Ain't going to happen. So tomorrow night, Bob uh, Vorchik will be with us. Bob Vorchik will be with us uh, tomorrow, and we'll be talking about uh, national security uh, in the sense of Israel, Saudi Arabia, uh, and others. Uh, who uh, are looking now at Donald Trump in a different light, not the light of the camera uh, by which the liberal media has uh, presented itself uh, congruently, uh, but literally by a speech that he gave in Saudi Arabia. And I, I, I listen, uh, I'm not asking Donald Trump to be Obama when it comes to speeches. I, I just ain't, I don't want to hear any more lectures. I, I don't need another lecture. Okay. It's probably one of the reasons why I love college. I don't need another lecture. But what I do need to hear is someone who makes these comments, and I want to go over them with you. Uh, for those who are following along at home, I put in the chat roll for everybody. Uh, the actual speech, I'm going to put it back in there for you all to peruse uh, as we move forward. But this is the message that we need to be giving all of those who said uh, that Donald Trump is incompetent, should not be the President of the United States. Uh, no, 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 no. I, I'm telling you. Uh, that you, we picked the right guy, and uh, let me let me just read here. Mm. Uh, let me actually let me begin here. Uh, it's towards the end of his speech. He says the entire region is at the center of the key shipping lanes of the Suez Canal, the Red Sea, and the Straits of Hormuz. The potential of this region has never been greater. 65% of its population is under the age of 30. Like all young men and women, they seek great futures to build, great national projects to join, and a place for their families to call home. Make the Middle East great again is basically what he's saying here. But this untapped potential, this tremendous cause for optimism, is held at bay by bloodshed and terror. There can be no coexistence with this violence. I want you to, I'm gonna put this in the chat roll. 
uh, because what we have been told over the past, uh, I would say eight years, 10 years, we might as well say the last two years of the Bush administration uh, was a gimme. It, it really was because he pretty much sold out to everything that was Democrat. He makes it very abundantly clear there can be no coexistence with this. We can no longer play this game of political correctness is what he's saying. You can't go to the to the water cooler anymore and say, well, you know, some it is a religion of peace. It ain't. Let me digress. There can be no coexistence with this violence. There can be no tolerating it, no accepting it, no excusing it and no ignoring it. Me chain. Today she's about to find out that the everyday things she and her family needs are going to become a lot more expensive. Really? Like seventeen hundred dollars. <laughs> thank you. Wow, thank you. Okay. Uh don't know where that came from, but I shall go on. Uh he goes on to say if we, uh, every time a terrorist murders an innocent person and falsely invokes the name of God, it should be an insult to every person of faith. When was the last time you heard a president stand up and say this to somebody? Okay? Say this to somebody without a shadow of a doubt. That it should be an insult if someone says uh, 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 Barack Obama or whatever. Um, no, 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 but you know what I'm saying. Ali Akbar. Terrorists do not worship God, they worship death. If we do not act against the, this organized terror, then we know what will happen. Terrorism's devastation of life will continue to spread. Anybody here in Manchester? Anyone? Anybody here in Paris? Anyone? Terrorism's devastation of life will continue to spread. Peaceful societies will become engulfed by violence and the futures of many generations will be sadly squandered. If we do not stand in uniform condemnation of this killing, then not only will we be judged by our people, not only will we be judged by history, but we will be judged by God. Can you, wow! <coughs> oh, my boy went nuclear on him. Mm. This is not a battle between different faiths, different sects, or different civilizations. This is a battle between barbaric criminals who seek to obliterate human life and decent people of all religions who seek to protect it. This is a battle between good and evil. Anyone feel Star Wars? When we see the scenes of destruction in the wake of terror, when we see no signs that those murdered were Jewish or Christian, Shia or Sunni, when we look upon the streams of innocent blood soaked into the ancient ground, we cannot see the faith or sect or tribe of the victims. We see only that they were children of God whose deaths are an insult to all that is holy. But we can only overcome this evil if the forces are good or united and strong. And if everyone in this room, he said everyone, Jew and Gentile, if everyone in this room does their fair share and fulfills their part of the burden. Terrorism has spread across the world, but the path to peace begins right here on this ancient soil in this sacred land. America is prepared to stand with you in pursuit of shared interests and common security. But the nations of the Middle East cannot wait for American power to crush this enemy for them. The nations of the Middle East will have to decide what kind of future they want for themselves for their countries, and for their children. It is a choice between two different futures. It is a choice America cannot make for you. And he goes on and he tells them to drive them out, drive them out. Now, you did not hear that on the evening news, nor will you. You're not going to hear that on the evening news because they want you to accept the fact that Donald Trump is incompetent and incapable, that Donald Trump couldn't possibly be uh, so cognizant of the battle before us, uh, that he's he's more overswam with the concept of getting two scoops of ice cream than dealing with issues of this magnitude. The same man who was able to help negotiate over a half trillion dollars of trade between Saudi Arabia and the U.S. 
that man is incompetent to be president. But there was one man who bowed down uh, before a Saudi king and did not mind yielding American blood for the sanctity of being politically correct. And that man is considered more competent than Donald Trump. I'm going to tell y'all right now, ladies and gentlemen, we got a gosh darn good president, and that was a gosh darn good speech. Uh, and I would encourage you to share it with everybody in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back. And for the great people of Manchester, we pray for you. And for the great people of the United Kingdom, you know what you have to do in the coming election. Got to go conservative. We'll be right back with more of the best right after these messages. Hello, this is Leslie Ann Stokely with The Real Clear Israel. Join me every Sunday morning at 10.05 Eastern Time on the Exceptional Conservative Network where we'll be discussing Israel with guests from Israel and around the world. That's The Real Clear Israel, 10.05 Sunday on the Exceptional Conservative Network. Remember when the wealthiest counties in America usually voted Republican, while middle and lower income voters almost exclusively voted Democrat? Hello, I'm Ron Edwards. On today's page from the Edwards Notebook, there seems to be a seismic change in voting patterns. More lower and middle income Americans are waking from their multi-decade automatic support for globalist socialist Democrats and are shifting their focus toward Republicans, while increasingly more and more wealthy Americans support Democrats, who are no friend of prosperity for the masses, unless it entails taking from the achievers to hand out to the idle. In fact, looney tunes like Senator Elizabeth Warren are against lowering the corporate tax rate. Of course, she and her fellow elites are wealthy enough to live comfortably with high taxes. But the world's highest corporate tax rate has caused over 50 U.S. corporations to move their headquarters and operations to lower tax nations like Ireland and Mexico. As a result, fewer jobs have been available and it is more difficult for Americans to raise themselves up by their own bootstraps by opening their own businesses because of high taxes and over-regulations. Now that should be one of the main rallying points for Republicans instead of them being scared little chickens afraid to support President Donald Trump's mission to make America great again. I'm Ron Edwards. Sponsored by the Tri-County Liberty Coalition. Hey gentlemen, I welcome you back to the Exceptional Conservative Show live from the nation's capital. We're reporting to you tonight. Uh, I want to thank Jason Miller for being in our chat room this evening. He's going to try to keep us abreast of everything that's happening in the United Kingdom. I'm just saying, you all complain in Britain about Theresa May. Uh, and, and in France, you all complained about Marie Le Pen, even though, quite frankly, she was very tough on the whole concept of immigration. No, she wasn't Adam Smith, but gosh darn it, she had a whole concept of what needed to be done to keep Paris uh, and France safe. Uh, but tonight, uh, we get word that uh, after an Iranian or Ariana Grande concert in Manchester, United Kingdom, not only have they shut down the subway system uh, there, but they also announced that 19 people are dead, over 50 are injured. Uh, a bomb that was used by a suicide bomber. We do not know if they are related to ISIS at this point, but we are definitely showing the signs of it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, how often have we been in this position? Really, how often have we been in this position when we know the, who the culprits really are and we're too politically correct to do anything about it? Uh, America, we got to change that. And I hope Europe is listening tonight. You all have to change, too. It, uh, the President of the United States will be visiting and talking with NATO uh, this week. Um, I think it's time for you all to change. We'll be back with more of the best in urban conservative talk right after these messages live from the nation's capital. You're listening to the Exceptional Conservative Show. Coming up, the Bloviating Zeppelin. And I'm, I'm quite certain BZ has a few remarks that he needs to make literally needs to make uh, for tonight.
Hey, it's Jersey Joe from the Reaver Common Sense. You can catch me every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on shrmedia.com. That's every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, shrmedia.com. You are listening to the Exceptional Conservative Network. For more information, go to www.TheExceptionalConservativeShow.com. Hi, my name is Willie Lawson. I'm the Willie Lawson Show here on the Exceptional Conservative Network. We have a brand new show on at 9 a.m. Monday through Friday. We are bound to make you think. We are bound to make you see things differently. We are bound to push you into action for not only your community, but your country. That's the Willie Lawson Show on the Exceptional Conservative Network, 9 a.m., Monday through Friday. See you there. Hi, my name is Chris Barano. I'm the executive chef of Infused Restaurant, and today I'm going to walk you through some of the meals that we prepare here. Three thirty nine Allentown Road, Temple Hills, Maryland, is the place to be. It is where good food is located, uh, whether it's during the week or the weekend, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh, it is a wonderful, wonderful atmosphere, a great place uh, to be. Uh, so definitely make it a part of your weekend plan. Uh, the exceptional one often eats here, and I encourage you to do the same. Money Talk with Melanie is a lively discussion of global, domestic, and kitchen table financial topics. Join your business diva, Melanie Collette, as I speak with respected entrepreneurs, CEOs, authors, and politicians as we explore today's fiscal environment. Money Talk with Melanie airs every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10.05 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Exceptional Conservative Network. Remember, this is important because it's your money. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you so much for staying tuned and listening to us on the Exceptional Conservative Show out of the nation's capital. The Exceptional Conservative Network is what you're listening to. We certainly are not ashamed of the good news of conservatism, for it is the power of liberation, first the Republican and then the Socialist. Coming up in just a few minutes is my very good friend, uh, Sir Mark the Bloviating Zeppelin. You can hear him on Berserk Bobcat Saloon uh, every Tuesday and Thursday night at 11 a.m. And you can also hear him on Wednesday nights uh, with Sackhead's Radio, Sackhead Sean, Sackhead Clint, uh, live and in charge. Uh, and that is at 11 p.m. Eastern Time, 8 p.m. Pacific. Uh, tonight, all eyes are focused on the United Kingdom, a terrorist attack in London, Manchester. They are having right now press conferences. Uh, and we want to thank Jason Miller for keeping us abreast of that in the chat room. Uh, 19 are dead, 50 are injured, as it is being reported at this time period. It is still night there. Uh, and so in the morning, we will have a different result, maybe. Uh, my hopes are. Uh, that the numbers go down, but normally by morning we find that the numbers are going in the opposite direction. But uh, tonight uh, with us, we will be 
uh, talking with some more people we'll definitely about this and amidst, uh, amidst other things uh, as well. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I, I want you all to know without a shadow of a doubt uh, that we are looking forward to our transition uh, to TECN.TV. We'll be making that tra transition in July uh, of uh, this year on the original Independence Day for America, July 2nd. Uh, and during that particular program, during that season or that, that time period, we'll be making the transition. We will be encouraging you to subscribe to us accordingly uh, and listen to all of the great programs that we'll be going over, uh, including two of our newest programs. In fact, uh, Randy and April uh, Perham will be going over with us with their program, The New. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, Lacey Steigerwall, uh, who is uh, doing a new show on TECN.biz will be going over with us as well. And I will be going, and we will be getting more results from more people who are making that decision as well. Uh, we encourage you. I know what I'm asking people to do is slightly out of the norm. Although I listened to Rush Limbaugh today, and Rush Limbaugh made a point that I made in an editorial recently uh, regarding Facebook. Uh, and Twitter, and that basically they are the vices of the liberal left, or the leftists, uh, the Marxist socialists, uh, and especially when you have the president of Twitter apologizing for maybe influencing the last election by lying uh, the president of the United States to tweet out uh, thoughts and actions. Uh, I, I want you all to know those things are captured by those on the left. They censor and they monitor, and I, I want my freedom. I, I, I want freedom, and I want it to be taken large and in charge. And I want you all, just like everyone talks about, well, I, I don't mind Donald Trump, and I'm one of those people. I don't mind Donald Trump tweeting out, okay? I'm one of those people. I, don't, I want him to go around the media. I really do, so I can hear his point of view without necessarily hearing it divined by someone else. Uh, but like Donald, uh, forgive me, like Rush Limbaugh said earlier today, uh, those are the trappings of the liberals, the, the, the leftists. Uh, they even have machines that create auto accounts, fake accounts, uh, and make, make fake tweets. And they, listen, time out for all of that. I refuse to surrender uh, to the left, I want to fight them, and I want them to fight me on my battlefield. And so, uh, TECN.TV will be that opportunity. We look forward to growing and building. Uh, and listen, let me just be honest with you. Not everybody is happy with this move. And you know this, man. But I got to listen to God, and I got to go with what my heart tells me. Uh, and I, I love everybody in this particular process. I want y'all to know. No matter what happens, I consider everybody still my friend, and I love them always. Uh, but there are some business decisions that have to be made, and we will be moving forward in those business decisions. We hope and we pray for the success of everybody who was a part of TECN, who will be a part of TECN, and who are a part of TECN. No matter what. It, it doesn't matter, one way or the other. But I do know this that when you come onto my network, you will not have to worry about whether I've been hacked or anything of that particular nature. You will get the information straight to your face. Uh, there will be no censoring. Uh, and if you are really beholden to Facebook and Twitter, you I'll tweet out where you can subscribe and watch us or whatever. But um, we will also have the free channel that you will be able to listen to some shows via free. Um, the Real Clear Israel with Leslie Ann Stoffel will be one of those. Um, so just want to let you know, but it's it's time now for us to begin acting like we want to govern instead of acting like we want to be ruled. Now, without further ado, uh, I want to bring on tonight uh, a, a man I truly love and adore uh, who, if you're not reading his stuff, oh my God, you need to. Uh, you need to make it just your business to, to read the Bloviating Zeppelin's uh, writings. Let's see. And yes, I did not play his commercial because I haven't set it up just yet. I, I played it last week, but I didn't play it this week. None other than the bloviating example of himself, Sir Mark uh, from Berserk Bobcat. 
Saloon. So glad to have him on the air with us tonight. Don't fret, Dave. Took me a few months also. All right. Who do we have here? Do we have the great Sir Mark, the bloviating Zeppelin? Domino's Pizza, how can we help you? <laughs> I'm still waiting for my three pizzas that I ordered. And I saw the little red thing, and it's all the way at the end, and y'all been 45 minutes late. I, I, I want my pizzas. This is Ken McClinton in Southwest. We have five pizzas backed up for you. We'll be delivering them in the next hour. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like Southwest. <laughs> oh, it does sound backed up. Yes, it does. Sir Mark, the Blue Man Example, so good to have you here with us tonight. Really? How good? Very really good. How good? It's very, very good. Uh, it's it's black hat wearing good. How about that? Well, it is. You are wearing the black hat. Black hat. That's true. That's true. Hey, hey, when you're a bad guy like me, the black hat fits. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I love a damn slow news day. Nothing's happening. I I, I don't even know why we called you, because nothing's now, happening. Why did you call me? I I have no idea. <laughs> I uh, want to get to the top story right now uh, because we were told by, by... You want to get to your pizza. Yeah, exactly, because <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> uh, apparently, we have been told by the Obama administration that ISIS is no longer a threat. Uh, and uh, as such, um, Great Britain uh, suffers tonight because apparently there was a suicide bombing which killed 19 people and have left around 50 people injured. Uh, it was in a Ariana Grande concert. And this is my question to you. Do, did we get our money back from the concert? Well, you know, if I went, I would, well, wait a minute. Didn't they see all of the concerts? And didn't it occur at the end of the concert? If so, if that's the fact pattern, the people that attend it ought to do a damn thing. Oh, gee. So I get blown up and I don't get my money back. <laughs> Why should you? You saw the concert. Well, I wasn't expecting there to be a bomb at the end of it. You know what I'm saying? Which ruined the well, atmosphere. Been you know, you know, Ken. Here's the meat. We 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 have lost the blue eating zeppelin for a few moments here. Let us pray and get uh -oh. the blue. We got the blue eating zeppelin back. There he is. Okay, I was saying it, it wasn't a bomb. It was just bad pyrotechnics. Ah! Uh, see? I knew it was something. I knew it was you something. Knew I would take, you knew I would shine a light from above on the truth. Exactly. And I, I sincerely appreciate the fact that you go where no one else in journalism will go, and that's directly to the truth. That's right. And the other place that I'll go that nobody else will will be the the standard gas station, the worst standard gas, the worst Chevron gas station ever in the worst city, which is Bakersfield. Never get off of Highway 99 and go into a Chevron station in Bakersfield. <laughs> You're going to feel the, the grungy coming right up your P-Street. It's never <laughs> stay away from Chevron gas stations in Bakersfield. That's an important safety tip from me to you. Thank you very much for all of you that were concerned because you're driving through Bakersfield sometime this week. You have received your public safety announcement. We only do one PSA a week, and, and, and we make certain that the bloviating Zeppelin, uh, Sir Mark, takes care of that. And thank you, sir. You have just saved thank you. 100 you lives. For free. <laughs> Oh my God! Uh, but in, in all seriousness, we, we got about two minutes before we go to a quick break. Um, but I, I want to get your initial thoughts on this, and when we come back, we'll talk about it in great detail. Uh, apparently, they were regretful that Theresa May was elected uh, prime minister. Uh, are they still regretting that in the United K tonight? I had I had two reactions. Mm -hmm. I'll give you the first, I'll give you the second one briefly, and when we come back, I can go into the second one uh, in a more extended fashion. The first one is, this is terrible, what a terrible thing. My sympathies lie with everyone in Manchester, 
and everyone in the UK. My second thought was, you deserve everything that you get. Bingo, there you go. We'll be right back with more of the best right after these messages with, of course, Sir Mark the Blue Ray Zeppelin, whom we played the wrong commercial for tonight, but he's so loving and forgiving that he will allow that to happen just this once. Uh, <laughs> just this once. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen, with more of the best right after these messages. Our amazing host at the Exceptional Conservative Network broadcasts 24 hours a day, seven days a week. However, sometimes they get lonely. Be the solution for HLS, post loneliness syndrome. Join us for advice, delightful conversation, and debate in the world's best form. The Euro Pacific Bank TECN chat room. Go to the Exceptional Conservative Show.com right now. Join us in chat by clicking on the TECS tab, Bible study tab, or TECN tab. The host you'll save makes TECN amazing. We'll be back after these messages. The best late night conservative talk show in America, Backhead Radio. And listen, there are no people better on the air to give you the best in conservative talk. Sackhead Sean and Sackhead Clan. Uh, and uh, we're working on the decoration papers for a certain other guy who happens to work here, too. <laughs> <laughs> for those who are tuning in around the world to the best late night conservative talk, Sackhead's Radio. Hark, 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 too. Hark, 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 too. Hark, 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 too. Hark, 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 too. You're listening to the Exceptional Conservative Show at theexceptionalconservativeshow.com. Stay tuned. We'll be back right after these messages. Meet Jason. He was really excited to start growing his business with social media until he realized how complex and time-consuming social media can be. It's difficult to manage multiple social networks and accounts. It's hard to monitor what's happening on social media, follow discussions, and engage with new followers. It's time-consuming to publish updates throughout the day, track and analyze how effective posts are, respond to fans and followers in a timely manner, and gain new customers. The list seems to go on and on. Jason quickly becomes discouraged. How could he ever do all of this and still run a business? He was ready to give up on social media until he found eClincher, the easiest way to manage social media. Jason was amazed how straightforward and simple it is to use eClincher. With eClincher, Jason is now able to leverage the power of social media without having to dedicate several hours a day. He can easily organize all his social media accounts in one place, efficiently plan and schedule his posts ahead of time, engage with his followers, understand the effectiveness of his efforts with powerful analytics, find new customers, and much more. In order to tell your business's story, simplify the process of managing your social media, and analyze results, Sign up with eClincher today. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back uh, at the Exceptional Conservative Show on the Exceptional Conservative Network, live from the nation's capital, Washington, D.C. Uh, of course, Mary Brockman, my bouncer, is in the chat role. And with us tonight is the Bloviating Zeppelin himself from bloviatingzeppelin.net, none other than Sir Mark. Sir Mark, I want to thank you so much for being with us. Uh, and you were saying so uh, villainously uh, just a few moments ago that the nuclear bomb that struck uh, the United Kingdom tonight was well-deserved. Isn't that what you said? I, I, may, I may have slightly taken it out of context, but is that what you're saying, sir? You know, let me be blunt. In a roundabout way, the one world answer, the one word answer would be yes. Yes. How? <laughs> I I can I can understand exactly. It's kind of an administration. 
how can you attempt to save people that don't see an out? How can you attempt to save people that keep voting the same shot in again and again and again when they are presented with alternate sources, alternate politicians who will take them a different direction, and that will be in terms of security. Now, with that said, stop. Security um, and freedom are always on a scales. There are massive scales, and they always... Okay, well, so Mark, the blue And then your freedom. Yes, sir? Yes, go right ahead. We, we dropped you for a moment, but you're back. Go right ahead. Okay. You can have sometimes great security and limited freedom, or you can have great amounts of freedom and limited security. That said, what you always attempt to do is to strike a balance between those two. It, it becomes readily apparent to me at this point that the UK is fundamentally unsupportable. And so is the EU. The EU, by way of France, recently... Okay. We're, we're, voted, mm -hmm. that person is yours, you own them. Mm -hmm. And then don't be surprised, don't be gobsmacked, when this kind of shit doesn't get stopped, it continues. So you have clearly voted that your state, your current state of culture in your towns, your cities, is okay with you. It's fine to see your kids blown up. Well, pretty much well said. Uh, but you won't find that on Fox News, and you won't find that on MSNBC or your local cable channel or your local news channel. Uh, that was a very blunt assessment and very well true. The bottom line is that you vote for the government you get, uh, and you have a government that is politically correct. You even have a Mohammedan who's the mayor of London who basically says you need to be used to this happening every day. Why are That's you right. all so upset? His name is Sadiq Khan. Now, if you don't have a clue as to what his name embodies for you and what his background is, you're stultifyingly, very glazingly ignorant. <laughs> but apparently, you are all stultifyingly, brain glazingly ignorant, and you embrace this person. As people from America say, when they go across the pond and if to, into a combat zone in, let's say, Afghanistan or Iraq, our military people say, you know what, embrace the suck. Mm -hmm. Guess what, UK? Start to embrace the suck, because the <laughs> suck is killing your kids. Welcome to your new now. The, welcome to your new now. So well said. That's why you should be reading the Blow Aid Zeppelin every day, uh, where Sir Mark is leading the way in terms of not only oration when he comes on our program, but certainly the scintillating thoughts of a mad author. Uh, and truly uh, one who needs to be reckoned with uh, by those on the left. Uh, it, it, listen, Sir Mark, uh, there are those who would condemn your remarks and say that you are a bit blustery this evening, that you are hyperbolic, that you simply are attempting to agitate individuals into violent reaction towards individuals who have not had any hurt, harm, or danger towards the good people of the United Kingdom. This is a matter of only a few, only a small number, and the rest of us are not like that. Uh, your retort, sir? Well, um, yes, I have three. <laughs> the first one, what? <laughs> you got it all together. You go, man. <laughs> The first one is, I know you don't like to hear this on your show, but to those who point fingers at me, number one, I don't give a fuck what you think. There you go. Number two, um, you bought... I want you to know that we're having some problems with this phone at this moment. <laughs> <laughs> number three, this goes back to BZ's terror axiom. And it's true, if there was ever a perfect example tonight of BZ's terror axiom, it's this. And what is my axiom? It's the longer authority is concealed the nature of actors in terror incidents, the more likely there are Muslims. Yeah. So, wait, Ken, 
do you suspect, maybe not tonight, definitely not tonight, maybe not even tomorrow, but the day after, or perhaps two days after, do you suspect, sir, just a little bit, that Islam may have had something to do with this? This It may have been a bit of a motivator for the actor or actors, plural, who were involved in this incident. What listen, do you think? Listen, I believe what the politically correct have told me, uh, this has got to be one of those Jehovah Witnesses who was knocking on someone's door, and then all of a sudden, boom. That's the way it probably went down, because the Jehovah Witnesses are just blowing up America all over the place and all over the world, uh, and, and they're the reason. So I'm expecting there to not be any Mohammedans uh, involved in this whatsoever. This does not look like a, a Mohammedan just not a suicide bomber. They're just too gleeful people. <laughs> okay, now at this point, I can reveal to you the two things that I heard about this incident. Okay. Number one, it was a Buddhist. Number <laughs> two, he was helped in concert with a Shinto priest. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. Breaking news, people. Breaking news. Uh, but uh, but in, in all seriousness here, how do you tell your family uh, that you voted to make certain that they were politically protected, but certainly not uh, protected against the criminal element that are out there to destroy them. Uh, how do you how do you say that to them? You, you were more concerned about being politically correct than safe. There are so many things that are conflicting that are going around in my brain right now because I know actually, oddly enough, quite a few things about this. I can speak only directly to the things in the United States. There are over 10 events that could have potentially occurred in the United States when, and I'll link it to this, we said at least 10 years ago that there were plots by Islamic uh, individuals mm -hmm. who wanted to send people with, with bombs and IEDs strapped into vests and walk them in, into U.S. balls. Yep, yep. I can tell you for a fact that at least 10 of those events have been stemmed in the United States within the past 10 years. There are, are undoubtedly more. Those are the only ones that I can even remotely slightly reveal to you now. That said, this is the same thing we feared in the U.S. that has now occurred in the U.K., and that is when you send your little girl and your little boy into some kind of, of a social arena, Mm -hmm. And your worst fears now have been realized, mm -hmm. that your kids are getting blown up. And, you know, at this point, Ken, do you hear anything linking Islam to this event in Manchester? Of course you don't. No. You know, we have deaths in the double digits. Mm -hmm. But again, my God, people, do, do the logical extension. Who do you truly think is responsible for this? Is it... Is it Mormons in Salt Lake City? I really don't think so. <laughs> I, don't think so. <laughs> I truly, well and truly don't. So, absent that, and in consideration of history, I have a phrase that says this. Mm -hmm. Islam is as Islam does. Mm -hmm. Exactly. We're talking with uh, Sir Mark Bouvier. And Whether in cleaning up their act, therefore... My first logical and concretely logical assumption is that this is linked somehow to Islam. Now, at this point, I say to the authorities, considering the BC axiom, prove me wrong. Exactly. But, but listen, we both know uh, how disingenuous the media is. Now, if this was a white male Catholic uh, doing this, Oh my God, we would have known 30 seconds after it was reported that it was done. Uh, and it would be the world news. It would be plastered all over. Those darn Christians are tearing up the world. But we know for a fact that they're going to keep this silent probably until Christmas in terms of who's done it. We know for a fact of who it is. It's every, the ID print here is definitely someone who is a Mohammedan. Uh, and there's an election coming up, 
uh, very soon in June in the Great Britain. Theresa May is uh, only up by eight points. She was once up by 20 points uh, in this election. I, I, when do the American people get tired of the Europeans is my question. Because they, they don't want to protect themselves. So why do we have to do it? Well, we're not much interested in that right now. I mean, you know, you and I and the people that listen to your show, we're different, we're separate. We actually have a pulse. We put our fingers on the pulse of what's happening, not just around this nation, but around the, the, the globe as well. Mm -hmm. I'd submit that roughly 95% of the people in the United States are completely ignorant, blithering morons when it comes to being cognizant of what's happening directly in front of their faces, with this exception. Until the veil of Islam gets pulled back and something like this actually occurs again in a massive amount, say 20 persons or more, in the continental United States. Well, and even yeah. then, I submit, Ken, we're going to be ignorant and naive and beat our breasts and say, you know what, Perhaps the saying that the Islamists, but, you know, I don't really believe that they are. The probably good people is what they really are, Ken. The good people that just can't get jobs. <laughs> Dang it! Dang it! You, how, how blatantly ignorant do we really have to be is, is my question here. And we are talking with Sir Mark the Bloviating Zeppelin. I, I don't know why we have to wait for someone to ID the guy. We, we, we know that it's a suicide bomber. Uh, waited to the end of the event uh, to blow himself up. But that's the other part. I, I thought they were doing checks on people going into these particular stadiums and events uh, to prevent there being uh, such a iconoclastic event. Uh, what happened to that? Well, I submit it's an if-then equation. If you get something like this occurring, while you have allegedly, and I, I can't speak to the security there. Yeah. Let's just say that there's some kind of security before going into the event. If you have security at an event and the security somehow gets breached, then that tends to lead me towards this is more than one individual involved. But if, again, another if-then equation, mm -hmm. if there were two, two, truly two explosions that occurred, mm -hmm. then that, that more than likely points me to an Islamic influence because the first explosion tends to draw people in. It tends to draw an emergency response. It's just like the Boston bombing and any other thing that occurs from Riyadh to Turkey to Istanbul. The second bomb is the one that attempts to kill the people that are responding to the first incident. So you'll have customarily in terms of IEDs, something to to initial an initial glossy thing that you'll pay attention to. Then as you respond, the second thing will occur, and if they're really sharp, there'll be a third. Mm. They were not quite so sharp today. But, but they were sharp enough to kill at least 20 people. Exactly. Now, to the logical extension. What would happen, what will happen, what could happen here in the United States if you have at something like this happening at what's name me for Ken, uh, Ken because I'm not I'm not yeah. familiar with DC. Name a popular mall attended by lots of youth in DC. Oh my goodness! If you went to Largo Mall or or uh, uh, or any one of the uh, Upper Northwest malls, uh, most certainly, uh, okay. it, it would be just it would be tantamount to uh, uh, the same thing uh, that happened in the United K. Okay, let's say 20 of your children all across the spectrum, because it really doesn't matter. Your children are black, they're white, they're Asian. It doesn't matter. But 20 of your, of your children are killed in that community. What do you suspect the reaction is going to be? Oh, outrage. Oh, how dare uh, they kill our children. Oh, my. But we must vote in another Democrat to make sure this doesn't happen again. Never again. 
here's the sad thing. You and I can, we can make fun of this. We can, li- we can make light of this. Yep. You can laugh. I can laugh. I, I pointed at my, my, my first reaction, which is how sad for the UK. My second reaction is accurate. They deserve everything they get. Yep. Why is that that I'm saying? Because they have all, they have every bit of the intelligence, yep. the technology, yep. the ability, yep. the wherewithal to apply all of that if only they had the desire to do so. And what desire do they lack? They lack the political desire to do so. You know so what? They have decided, the UK, the people in the UK, in Manchester, and it, it gets spread across the entire United Kingdom, they have already come up with some kind of uh, an equation that says, in terms of not disturbing Islam or elements of Islam, it's perfectly acceptable for X percentile of our true citizens to be killed before we decide that Islam is truly a problem. In other words, those people were just a sacrifice. Yes. That's all they were, Ken. They were just a political sacrifice. How much umbrage will truly be spent on this incident? Tomorrow will tell, won't it? You're, you Listen, you are absolutely on point tonight. Uh, and Arrow Dave Milner is telling us all about that in the chat room. You are absolutely on point. The bottom line is that the we have become sacrificial lambs to the political correct. Uh, whether you're in the UK, whether you're in uh, Israel, whether you're in Washington, D.C., or the rest of the United States, we or Canada, it doesn't matter. You're, they have already come up with a schematic, a statistic that says that this is the number of people that we could risk losing without there being any serious discontent. And you are absolutely positively right about that. The unfortunate thing is uh, that it's our kids, that it's us. Uh, and it's not them. The politicians are never it's, it's part a, of the statistic. It's a political sacrifice. Now, again, you made an excellent point just now. Mm-hmm. Of those people killed, how many of those were persons in the political bureaucrat decision-making class? My wager would be none. Zero. Because all of those people and their children live privileged lives behind walls, behind closed doors in private schools, run in shuttles, in armored limousines, and all of that paid by the taxpayer dime in the UK until they get personally affected. This is not going to change, Ken. It's not going to change. Listen, I want you to... Which is why I say the people in the UK, you shouldn't be surprised about this. No, no. Get the hell over it. There's going to be more. Yeah, listen, you had the mayor of London say it. Sadiq made it very clear. This would be happening every day. What you, I'm disappointed it's not happening every day. We're losing our touch here. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you can hang over, because I want to talk with you about Seth Rich um, and the Seth Rich family. Uh, I'd be pleased to. Uh, who are telling us that the FBI never checked the computer. Winkity, wink, wink, wink. Uh, and that the Seth Rich died because of a fumbled robbery, even though still had his watch and his wallet on it. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. There's a lot of stuff going on around the world, and you need to be a part of it. You're listening to the Exceptional Conservative Show live from the nation's capital. We will be right back with Sir Mark, the Bloviating Zeppelin, right after these messages. We'll be back. Now, for Amels, we know you may have only one shot to harvest that trophy, so we have thousands of accessories and replacement parts to improve your chances. We know how much you love to shoot, so our gunsmiths' articles and videos will help you do more and get more out of your guns. We also value your hard work and money. That's why only Brownells backs up everything we sell with a 100% unconditional lifetime guarantee. Brownells, the world's largest supplier of firearm accessories and gunsmithing tools. Thank you for the turkey in the clock. And I really enjoy ICRN, your station, the station I listen to all day. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, thanks, Comedy. So, what do you think about ebooks? Maybe you've never read an ebook before, but you're considering giving it a try. 
Or maybe you've been reluctant to try ebooks because you don't want to buy another expensive electronic device. Or maybe you already enjoy ebooks, but you haven't been able to find titles from your favorite Christian authors. Whatever your situation, ChristianBook.com has the solution. Your trusted source for print books for over 30 years now offers ebooks. Our always free CBD reader allows you to read on the devices you already own without spending money on a new device. Thousands of Christian ebooks at ChristianBook.com means you can shop with confidence and choose from the titles you want. Plus, we are adding new titles all the time. Browse our huge selection of low priced Christian ebooks the same way you would printed books, only now you can go from shopping to reading in seconds. Simply select the ebook you wish to purchase, confirm your account information, and start reading. Free samples of every ebook are available, so you can preview the book first before you buy it. Plus, there's no lengthy app downloads and updates. Accessing the CBD Reader is as easy as going to cbdreader.christianbook.com and bookmarking the page. The CBD Reader holds your ebooks and bookmarks for you, no matter what device you're on. So, you can take your entire ebook library wherever you go and pick up right where you left off. Our customizable options make it possible to read your ebooks in different font sizes and styles. Want a large print version? You've got it in seconds with a simple click of the mouse. Already own a dedicated e-reader? Download your ebooks to your computer from your ChristianBook.com account and transfer them to your device. Try ebooks at ChristianBook.com and start reading your favorite books in seconds. Easy, economical, everywhere you want to read. Welcome to ChristianBook.com ebooks. The dream deferred is real. You've been waiting for the Exceptional Conservative Network, and now it's here. Go to the exceptionalconservativeshow.com. Tune in and get the best in urban conservative talk. Stop dreaming. It's real. Good morning. I'm Michael Wright. And I'm Shannon Wright. Okay, folks, that's not how it goes. I think I'm <laughs> Shannon and I you're so. Michael. Yeah. Okay. We are The Right Way with Shannon and Mike. Join us from 7 to 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Live on SHR Media. And on TECN. Where we'll be talking about all kinds of things. From sports and politics. To food and entertainment. To money. Family. And anything else in between. Community, holidays, all kinds of things. It'll be great. Join us from 7 to 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Hi, my name is Willie Lawson of the Willie Lawson Show here on the Exceptional Conservative Network. We have a brand new show on at 9 a.m. Monday through Friday. We are bound to make you think. We are bound to make you see things differently. We are bound to push you into action for not only your community, but your country. That's the Willie Lawson Show on the Exceptional Conservative Network, 9 a.m., Monday through Friday. See you there. Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you back to the final quarter of the program, the Exceptional Conservative Show, live from the nation's capital. Tomorrow night, we'll have Bob uh, Vorchak uh, with us, tremendous journalist, journalist, forgive me, as well as national security expert. We'll be talking about such thing as Manchester and those things, those happenings of the president while he visits the Vatican and also talks with NATO this week, uh, having created a Arab NATO. Uh, we're going to get his comments about that as well. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight, 19 dead, 50 injured. Uh, United Kingdom is on lockdown uh, because of a terrorist attack obviously done by a no-name religion or cult. Um, we kind of winkety-wink know who that is. We're talking tonight with Sir Mark the Bloviating Zeppelin. You will hear him tomorrow night live uh, at 11 p.m. Eastern Time on the Bloviating uh, Berserk Bobcat Saloon. Forgive me. Uh, Sir Mark the Bloviating Zeppelin with us tonight. He is also a great writer, and you can read us up at thebloviatingzeppelin.net. Sir, uh, Seth Rich, 
uh, had the same fate as my, well, similar fate as my daughter on the streets of Washington, D.C. My daughter was coming home from covering a journalist, as a journalist covering a story on Capitol Hill. Uh, she was shot and killed by gang members. Seth Rich uh, had an appointment to meet with uh, someone, uh, I believe at the CIA, that morning and never made it because of a bumble, bungled robbery. Your thoughts, your writing, sir, regarding Seth Rich. Well, first, I want to correct one error, one serious, grievous error that you recently stated with regard to Manchester. The people that I think that are going to be ultimately found responsible for that are the UK Manchester Sanitation Workers Union. <laughs> probably will. Oh, my God. <laughs> Uh, bet you they'll pay us on time next time. Ugh. That's right. Now, see, this is, you'll note that in the future, the sanitation workers after this, uh, the chances of striking will be twofold, slim and none. Slim and none at all. Now, the, the number of injured is up to 59. As I stated earlier tonight, that number will grow by morning when we get more information from the great nation of Great Britain. Um, but apparently, Seth Rich uh knew a guy and that guy was about to send some information to a guy in england uh who was sitting in a little room uh a under house arrest uh seth rich is this a conspiracy did the clintons get him here's the weird thing about this you always have to weigh on a scales the tinfoil hat wearing conspiracy theorists versus the number of times that these things get mentioned and the validity and veracity of those that tend to mention that. Right now, Sean Hannity is taking a boatload of crap and from his fellow Fox News people for even giving this the slightest amount of airtime. And I would not necessarily be uh, motivated to do this had not some other things come to light. Mm -hmm. I pay attention to what happens in the past. I attempt to correlate it to the, to the, the current events and try to prognosticate what it is that's going to occur in the future. It was Julian Assange who said last year that uh, he was stating unequivocally and was rather adamant about it, mm -hmm. that the Russians were not involved in the hacks of John Podesta and the DNC. Yeah. And by logical dint of the extent, that would be to Hillary Clinton as well, because the meme began immediately and continued to be, and is still today, despite any number of people saying that, no, this is, uh, it's being, the balloon is being punctured, even as we speak. But yet, they, the Democrats will not be happy until they find something that they're not going to locate, which is that one sole Russian in a dirt pile. <laughs> yet all the evidence is not pointing that way. That's it. Mm -hmm. Evidence was indicating, and Julian Assange was saying, that the person's responsible for the leaks of these emails was not Russia. Mm -hmm. And if it's somebody because he's in charge, essentially, even though he was in house arrest um, in the Ecuadorian embassy of all places, yes. uh, because of a Swedish rape arrest warrant, which oddly, yes, See, all of this stuff you have to take in toto. The, Sweden's, the Swedes just dropped the rape charges against Julian Assange. Mm. Why now? Why here? Why is that occurring? Well, that, you know, that may or may not be material. That said, I would guess, I would suspect that if there was someone who had an idea about where the various releases and WikiLeaks from where they stemmed, it would be Julian Assange. And he said essentially that no, Russia was not involved. And he's in a roundabout way and simultaneously in, in a very pointed way. He said that Seth Rich's murder on D.C. streets in July of last year may have been the result of his spreading, finding out some things, and attempting to ship them up to WikiLeaks. Mm -hmm. To people are saying roughly 44,000 emails, up to 55,000 emails, uh, depending upon who you believe, yeah. who you give the greatest amount of veracity to. Now, Ken, if there's one thing that you and I know, and I know this historically, and you know this most recently, in uh, 2015, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Your daughter was the subject of a D.C. investigation. Now, even way before that, I can tell you, and I'm not speaking out of school when I say that the D.C. Metropolitan Police Department is historically not known for the finest of investigations because they're historically known for the greatest amount of leaks yep. and for perhaps in, 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 in a significant metropolitan agency that larger, larger, they're known for about the least amount of diligence. And you saw the results of that mm -hmm. to the point where I would guess that at some point you suspected that they were simply uninterested. Now, that's 2015. Mm -hmm. Your daughter was not politically connected, but it was, it was terrible enough that your daughter was killed because of gang activity when a gangbanger used her as, as craven as that individual was to use her as 
a shield. Mm-hmm. That in and of itself is enough to, that's enough to blow a family apart. And, and I have to say to you and your wife that you're still together after this, because I know many couples who, after encountering some kind of a, a horrible event like this, they're no longer together. Mm-hmm. They're gone. Mm-hmm. I can regale you with numerous tales about that. Exactly. Just in driving accidents through EVOC. So God bless you and your wife for doing that. That Thank said, you. now we have an event in 2016 where politics may or may not be involved. It turns out that D.C. police investigated that and concluded that though this person was shot twice in the back, he was a DNC staffer, and he was alive for a time and they expected him to recover, and nothing was stolen, that he was the victim of a robbery. Though now we're discovering that it may have been he who was responsible for sending, potentially after seeing what's going on in the DNC, and saying, you know, I didn't sign up for this. Yep. I thought the Democrats were better people than this, and this is, this is disappointing me. And now somehow I may feel motivated to do something about this. Mm-hmm. So the, the, the overall nexus is not yet complete, but I'm not going to ignore the story because the true story is this. Mm-hmm. The Democrats, in my opinion, killed four people in Benghazi. No one suffered. And yet Donald Trump, who has essentially killed no one, needs to be impeached and eradicated from the face of the earth. Just ask the Democrats. Mm-hmm. Now, if we discover somehow that they are involved and the DNC is involved and John Podesta is involved, and the former DNC chairs, two of them, are involved, and Hillary Clinton is involved in a murder? Yeah. Can I suspect that's a story? That's, I suspect that's a story. That's a story. As opposed to the rest of the American media maggots, no, no, sir, I'm not going to ignore it. I'm not pointing my finger on a guilty person. I'm not saying specifically who is culpable. Mm-hmm. But I'm not going to ignore it either. Exactly. Now, last week, uh, especially here in Washington, D.C., the former police detective, D.C. police detective Rod Wheeler, uh, who went on to become an yeah. attorney, came under direct arrest uh, from the Metropolitan Police Department at the highest levels, and the word got out that Rod Wheeler was probably never a detective in the MPD. There's no paperwork to show that, uh, and that he was not a credible person to begin with as he did not have an honorable career with the Metropolitan Police Department. That's how a story regarding Seth Rich ended uh, on Channel 9. Now, I I just want to say this. Rod Wheeler was the guy who said, uh, I know people on the inside who have told me that they have not looked at that hard drive, the FBI has not looked at that hard drive, the parents have that computer, and quite frankly, everything lines up and adds up to it not being a bungled uh, robbery, that this was a direct hit on this guy. Now, when he came out with that statement, Rod Wheeler, Fox News was a lit, everybody was a lit in Washington, D.C., and everyone did what they could do to squash it, including the family members who stated that this was all conspiracy speak. But the truth, yes, I, I saw that. Yes, I saw that. Mm-hmm. But the truth of the matter is that there are a lot more questions now after Rod Wheeler than there were before Rod Wheeler. Am I right on that? And here's the other thing: politics tends to run in families. Mm-hmm. If you're a member of that family, your son Seth Rich is killed, and it turns out that the people that you've supported for years, the Democrats, mm. may be involved in the killing of your son. Is that so not far? far exceeding the potential possibilities of that, that you don't even want to think that that's remotely possible. Mm. Because you've supported them, you've voted for them consistently throughout the years, and you are fervently believing that they cannot be involved. How could they? Why would they? He was your son. Don't they realize how valuable he was to you? Mm. My guess is, that's the stance. I've seen it over the times. How many times have I come and went and, and gone to suicides where all the family members have told me, Jim would never commit suicide. Tanisha would never commit suicide. Yep. Bob would never commit suicide. He wasn't like that. And yet he's dead. She's dead. Mm-hmm. And yes, they did commit suicide. So I'm sorry, family members, they believe what they must because they're family and it's blood. Exactly. I'm going to go with the facts. I'm going to wait and see how this plays out. I'm not pointing fingers. I'm not taking a finger and, and smushing it on top of one particular theory. But I'm not going to not consider everything that I see. I'm just, I'm just highly, I may be speculative here, but I find it disconcerting. The Metropolitan Police Department didn't send that computer to the FBI and that the FBI didn't do any research on it whatsoever. I'm just saying something's not right. Uh, in D.C., it doesn't smell good. That's all I'm saying. Mark, well, for, God, a time, for, for a time, people couldn't even find out who had the computer. Exactly! Was it the police or was it the FBI? And neither one
one of them would tell who has the computer. Furthermore, in a murder investigation, whether it involves politics or not, as a homicide investigator, can, would you not want to attempt every source, every potential camera within that area? I'm Especially with the, the promulgation of cameras these days. I have a list of cameras on the board side right now that were not consulted, including the cameras in the bar to find out what was he wearing at the time that he walked into the bar versus his time of death versus how many people and who spoke to him and when he exited the bar. None of that occurred. Let's just say that if it did occur, we don't know about it and they don't want to tell us something smells bad in D.C., that's all I'm saying. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm well beyond time. Got to wish you all a good night. God bless you. Always remember, God bless America. It's time for America to bless God. We'll be back tomorrow night with Bob DeVort. We'll see you. God bless you. Thank you so much, BZ. Great call. <laughs>